hey guys what's up welcome back to the channel so in this video i'm going to be teaching you guys the basics of supply and demand remember guys this is the part three of a three-part series in the first part we talked about how to analyze the forex charts in the second part we talked about how to identify trends in the forex market and now this is the third and final part of the series if you're new to the channel uh, my friends the great welcome to the channel and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for all of your support without any further ado let's get straight into the charts hey guys welcome back to the charts so basically what is supply and demand supply and demand can still be defined as the lows or the highs that cause the break of a structure now i'll be explaining this that's the most easy and the most simplest way to define supply and demand and as you can see there are a lot of examples on the charts currently i'll be explaining each of them very soon so i just want you guys to understand that whenever you have a high or a low i'm going to draw it right here so you guys can understand it clearly Whenever there is market conditions like this, let's say this is for an uptrend now, it consists of a series of highs and lows, highs and lows, higher highs and higher lows. Whenever there is a series of higher highs and higher lows like this, the supply, the demand zones for a uptrend, now we're looking at demand zones for an uptrend, the demand zones are every low that causes a break of a structure so something like this i'm going to show you guys here for an uptrend with a series of higher highs and higher lows higher highs and higher lows higher highs and higher lows and so on every low that causes the break of a structure that takes out a previous high is considered a demand zone every low that takes out a previous structure that is a previous high is called a demand zone every low that takes out a previous high that breaks structure is called a demand zone so now i'm going to be marking out all the demand zones that we have in what i just drew so here we have this to be our first demand zone right here then we had this to be our second demand zone right here and the last demand zone we have is up here so for every low that causes the break of structure that causes the break of a structure be it a high or a low is a demand zone for an uptrend now for a downtrend which is the reverse the case is being reversed now a downtrend consists of a series of lower lows and lower highs lower lows and lower highs so for every high that causes the break of a structure in a downtrend is called a supply zone so this is the break of the structure here it broke structure here this high broke the structure here then we have the last one this high breaking the structure here now so for every high now i'm going to use the arrow for every high that breaks structure to the downside for a downtrend is called a supply zone but this is another high that broke structure to the downside it was a supply zone again now this is the last high that broke structure to the downside so we can see this part too is also a supply zone right here it's a supply zone too so we can see the difference between on the left side now on this side of the screen i'm going to mark it out now so on this side of the screen now we had various demand zones the lows breaking the nearest highs the lows breaking structure the lows breaking structure those are demand zones now on the right side of the screen which is the side right here we had supply zones which are the high breaking structure to the downside the highs are breaking structure to the downside the highs breaking structure to the downside so we have those highs are known as our supply zones when price comes back to it now coming back to the charts i'm going to explain all the scenarios that i drew previously for you guys just now so we're going to be experimenting and we're going to be practicalizing it on the charts right now so we can see here if you look at let's start from the left side now we're going to look we're going to focus on this market right here so previously we're in a range market forming a series of equal highs and equal lows but something happened at this very point you saw that this low was, was responsible for pushing price out of the ranging market so let's say this box now i'm going to identify the ranging market with the box so this box right now was our ranging markets because you can see price ranging from the left side 
just continuously ranging and ranging and ranging forming a series of equal highs and equal lows on the side but at this point right here this low price was able to finally break through our ranging markets so price this low was responsible for breaking price to the upside for breaking structure to the upside just the way we talked about on the diagram i drew so i'm going to put it on the line chart so we can see it clearly we can see it clearly now that this low was responsible for breaking structure to the upside and what happens when structure is broken to the upside we have a demand zone forming a demand zone simply means that enough buy orders were inducted here, enough buy orders were activated here enough buyers were interested in price enough buyers were interested in price just at this zone pushing price to break through our re previous ranging market to the upside so once that has been once price has successfully broken through our previous ranging market to the upside we know that this zone now is now our demand zone we are expecting price to come back into our demand zone activate the remaining buy orders that were not previously activated here because remember guys a lot of buyers entered into the market here some had orders placed some entered with instant execution some hard orders that were placed so the orders that were not filled in this place that price did not fill is what price came back down here to fill and once price has filled in those orders price bought to the upside so this was a valid and confirmed demand zone to push price to the upside now we move over to a supply zone so this supply zone this was our this was our the high that was responsible for breaking market to the downside so this was the break of the market right here the market broke here it was this high that was responsible for breaking the market to the downside and remember guys once we have a high breaking the market or breaking structure to the downside then that high is classified as our supply zone and basically what, what can we see that happened here so since this was the high that was responsible for breaking structure to the downside this was the last structure that was, that was inside the market so this high was responsible for breaking into the downside we know that this is a valid supply zone and what can we see price came back into the supply zone and mitigated the supply zone then sold off more to the downside so at this point what, what can we tell at this point we can see we can see that there was enough sellers into the, inside the market at this point a lot of, a lot of people were interested in selling the market at this point to push the market to the downside to break previous structure lows previous major lows previous support zones here to break it and go to the downside so it since there were enough sellers inside here we know that when price will eventually come back there because enough all the sell orders that were in here were not fully activated but when price comes back into the zone it's going to activate the remaining sell orders that were not activated previously before going to the downside so it comes here yeah, there are a lot of new sellers that will enter the market there are a lot of activated orders that will be occur that will occur on this point so we can see the reaction basically we can actually see the reaction so we saw the push to the downside and you can see immediately price got into the zone again for the second time since there were a lot of sell orders a lot of sell limits a lot of um people interested in selling the market at that previous zone because it was a zone in which sellers enter the market from we can see the big push of price with this very long candle to the downside so this clearly signifies that yes this supply zone was a valid zone because first off we know that we can see from this side now if you if you go back a bit we can see that the market has now shifted to a downtrend remember guys we talked about trend now in the last part of this three part series we talked about trend so we can see that the market has shifted to a downtrend what can we also see we can see that this was the we can also see that this was the low that created a break of structure to the downside breaking previous market structure to the downside so since we're in a downtrend and since we have a high breaking structure to the downside we are very sure that if price comes back to that high this is now a valid supply zone because price will eventually come back to the high mitigate it then sell more as you can see to the downside so that is how to identify your supply zone now this was a demand zone why is this a demand zone remember guys if we have a low that breaks structure to the upside we know that that low is considered a demand zone so what structure did this low break let's identify the structure right now 
so we saw that this was our last high here this was our last structural high here on this zone was our last structural high so i'm going to mark that out so this was our last structural high we had this low breaking the last and the previous structural high to the upside so what do we expect we expect that we, we now know that yes this low enough buyers enter the market at this zone enough buyers were interested in the market at this zone to push the price all the way to break this high and go to the upside so we now know that yes enough buyers were interested here there were enough buy others here there were enough money for buyers into this inside the market here and there were enough buy orders that have not been activated here so what can we expect we expect that when price comes back to this zone since this zone was responsible for the breaks of this high when price will eventually return back to the zone it will activate the remaining buy orders and proceed to go to the upside because when price comes back to the zone a lot of people are going to be interested in entering the market for buys at this zone so that's exactly what price did as you can see price came back into the zone there were a lot of orders that were activated there were a lot of people that entered the market for a buy position at this zone and it shot price up to a greater high in forming a new high greater than the previous structural high that was formed here so since we have this low now breaking this high and forming breaking this structure and forming a greater high we can actually say that this our uh, low that we have here is going to be our new demand zone so eventually if eventually if price managed to come back to this zone we know that enough buyers were inside the zone enough buyers entered the market at the zone to push the market and break this last structural high to the upside so this was the break right here the break happened right here the break to the high happened right there so we can know we can say okay yeah finally this is going to be our new demand zone right here but price as you can see from here that price didn't later come back to our demand zone because sometimes price reacts from previous resistance it turns support since the break was already occurred so i talked about um this type of entry in the last part of the video so i talked about previous resistance previous resistance turning support I talked about it in the last part of the video so if you have not watched that video ensure you go watch the part two of this video because it was the last part that i posted so this is the part three so go watch the part two to understand this type of entry because this entry it didn't come back to our demand zone it reacted from a point of previous resistance down support and it went back it went all the way to the upside and now we have another situation here a very much similar situation to the first demand that we talked about in this video so here we had our ranging market right here so as you can see it was a sideways market creating a series of equal highs and equal lows i talked about ranging market in the first part of our video i also talked about ranging markets in the second part part two of this series so we ensure you go check out the part one and the part two of the series so um you can see that we are currently we are currently in the ranging market because we are forming a series of sorry I'm going to delete that because you can see we were forming a series of equal highs here and equal lows on this side but what can we see this low this low was finally responsible for the break of the ranging market so this low was responsible for the break of structure to the upside i remember guys once structure is broken to the upside that low is classified as a demand zone and what can we expect when price comes back you can as we can see here just right here right here we can see price was able to it was able to break structure to the upside and price came back remember guys there was a lot of buyers in this zone so when you can see that when this low is responsible for breaking this high we know that yes enough buyers were in this zone to push price above this previous ranging market to the upside and when, when price came back to the zone enough buyers entered the market again there were a lot of limits orders that were activated orders that were not activated before we activated which was which finally pushed price again to the upside creating a new greater high that was a higher high breaking this previous high structure and going to the upside so since this low was necessary for breaking structure to the upside creating a new higher high we know that this low now is considered a demand zone so remember guys this was the first zone that was broken so this was the first high that was broken right here so i'm going to delete this so this was the first high that was broken right here so let me delete this too this was the first high that was broken to the upside 
and we consider this a demand zone. Now, the same thing happened here. This low was responsible for breaking this high. So since it's responsible for breaking this high, again, we can also say this is a demand zone. And now let's see what happened to price on the right side. As you can clearly see, since this low was responsible for breaking this high, when price finally came back down to the low, again, a demand zone, buyers still were interested in this zone buyers were like yes since this low since this high was interest was um since this low was responsible for breaking this high i remember guys that we were in an uptrend so the trend had already, had already shifted to the upside so the overall trend now that was the overall trend now that was previously a downtrend had now shifted to an uptrend so we're going we're, we're in an uptrend so so we're in, a, we're in an uptrend now. We can see that we're in an uptrend here, and we had lows breaking highs, lows breaking previous structural highs. We had this low breaking this previous structural high to the upside. It was reacted as a demand zone again. Then we had this low again breaking this structural high to the upside in, a, in an uptrend, forming a new demand zone. So we expect that when price comes back, since we are still in an uptrend, that price is going to react from the, the last demand that was formed and goes to the upside and that's exactly what price did when price came back down here it reacted to the remaining buy orders that were not previously activated and it reacted to the remaining orders that were currently just being activated because a lot of people entered buys again because we see that this was the load of responsible for the break of structure to the upside so enough people entered the buys again to push price to the upside and as you can see price was able to go to the upside successfully creating the last high for this market now just as we discussed before we see that currently the market is in a ranging market right now we can see series of equal highs here on the upside and we can see series of equal lows here on the downside but what happened since market was in the range you were looking for a break of structure since market was in the range sideways market you can sell at resistance sideways market that you can buy supports for, for um sideways market but Overall, we're looking at it going to the downside because if you can zoom in a bit, we can see that price has, price has shifted from an uptrend. Since price took out this lows here, it shifted from an uptrend to a downtrend because I've explained about I've explained this in my last video. So make sure you go check out my last video if you haven't checked it out. So price shifted from an uptrend to a downtrend. So we just needed a high to take out the ranging market. So we had a ranging market here, we had a series of equal highs here, series of equal lows here. But what can we see now on the right side? On this side right now, on this side right now, we can see that price was finally able to break out of the ranging market. And this was the high that was responsible to break the ranging market structure to the downside. Remember guys, first we are in a downtrend. Next we had the break of structure, the break of the ranging market to the, to the downside. So this was the ranging market it was broken to the downside at this point so now since since this was the high responsible for breaking the previous ranging market to the downside we know that this is going to be a valid supply zone and now let's see what happened on the right side so i'm going to delete this so since so now we can see that we can see now that after price came back to this zone because it was the it was the high that was responsible for breaking out of the ranging market to the downside so after price came back to this zone enough buy seller sells orders enough sellers limits enough sellers were interested in the zone at this very point and we can see the reaction of price exactly what happened when price got to that point price came back to the supply zone and sell and sold aggressively to the downside a little recap now remember guys supply zones are the last highs that caused the break of a break of structure to the downside or a break of market structure to the downside that is what is classified as a supply zone a high that caused the break of structure a break of market structure to the downside is what is called a supply zone and when price comes back to that zone or to that level we know that sellers are interested in selling price and pushing price down after that zone has been mitigated or after that zone has been after price has gotten to that level we know that we are expecting sellers to activate their orders here to enter in their sell orders here to push price you can see the aggressive movement of price here to push price to the downside that is what a supply zone is and lastly a demand zone is a zone that is responsible for breaking is a low that is responsible for breaking the market structure to the upside 
Remember, guys, a low responsible for breaking the market structure to the upside is what's called the demand zone. And we are expecting that when price comes back to that low that broke the structure, it will buy again to the upside. And now, that will be all for today's video. If you ended up gaining valuable knowledge from today's video, don't forget to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn on the post notifications so that whenever I upload future videos, you'll be made aware of it. If you have any questions for me, ensure you drop them down in the comment section. I'll be reading all comments and replying to every question you have down there. If you want to reach out to me on social media, I have an Instagram channel. I'm going to be dropping the handle down here, IFSD Grades. I'm also going to be dropping the link in the description. With that being said, I wish you guys a lovely, a safe and an amazing day. Goodbye, everybody.